Morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning Five here on Friday, October 9th, 2015. I am Dave Biddle, and I'm happy to be joined by Jonah Booker, Bucknuts contributor, former defensive back at Ohio University. Jay Book, always good to talk to you, my man. How you doing? I'm doing well. Happy to be here. You know, the biggest topic this week, we can't get away from the quarterback talk. We just can't. And we're going to blame our good friend Steve Hellwag and our colleague. Now, Steve had a great question this week, and everybody's piggybacked on it. People have asked follow-up questions. The question being, Coach Meyer, would you entertain the notion of J.T. Barrett being inserted instead of Cardale Jones in red zone situations? And as I pointed out before, Jay Book, it would have been very easy for Coach Meyer to say, even if he was thinking about that that was a good idea, it would have been very easy for Coach Meyer to say, no, we're not, think, we're not going to do that. Cardale's our guy. For him to actually entertain the notion spoke volumes to me. What does this say? What was your take of the fact that, that Meyer is at least considering this? Is this a smoke screen, or do you think he's actually considering it? I think he's considering it. I mean, it kind of took me back uh, a little bit there, and I was wondering – is this something that they're looking at on film and saying, hey, Cardell's just not getting it done down there? Obviously, the numbers speak for himself, but for them, for them to come out and say that, that's, that's big-time news there. It's, it's telling me one or two things. Either they absolutely do not have confidence in Cardell Jones. You kind of saw it in the Indiana game when they pulled the ball out of his hands, wouldn't allow him to throw in the fourth quarter. And then you're looking at what J.T. Barrett did last year. He was one of the most proficient quarterbacks in the country in the red zone. But my biggest thing is, if Cardell's your guy, ride with him. If you're taking him out in the red zone, what is that going to do to his confidence? But if you want to put in J.T., then let J.T. be your quarterback. Yeah, do you think deep down, I asked Bill Rabinowitz this question last time I did the show on Wednesday, do you get the feeling, Jay Book, that deep down Urban Meyer prefers J.T. Barrett over Cardale Jones as his quarterback? I think the one element that Urban Meyer badly wants to see is the run element in his offense. He's always said whenever the quarterback is a threat with his legs, they can take advantage of the numbers. With Cardale Jones, they're not able to take advantage of those numbers in a box, and the quarterback is not having to be accounted for. So you're not really seeing the offense flourish as it did under Braxton Miller or J.T. Barrett. It's hard to get out of your mind a guy who put up 46 total touchdowns last year, broke Drew Brees' record for the all-time career or single-season touchdowns in the season. So to me, there is an element that's probably in back of Urban Meyer's mind saying, did I make the right decision? Because in order for them to think about putting J.T. Barrett in during the red zone, I mean, that's telling me right there that there's, there's somewhat a little bit of skepticism if Jones can get the job done down there. Switching gears, Buckeyes are losing depth fast at a couple different positions, wide receiver and in the secondary. My question to you, Jay Book, are you more concerned about the lack of depth at the wide receiver position or are you more concerned about the lack of depth in the secondary? I will have to go with the secondary. At the wide receiver position, yes, bodies are dropping, but you also have enough personnel there that you can schematically um, scheme around some of the injuries as far as going only two and three wide receiver sets. Defensive back, there's no hiding that. You're a Marshawn Latimer hamstring away from having to play a true freshman in that nickel spot. I know you and I have spoke previously about hey, we thought Eric Smith would get a shot at the nickel back, and Fickle had recently said he really hasn't practiced in that position. I wouldn't mind seeing him getting some reps in practice to potentially have him ready to go in case something happens to Latimer, because if something happens to Latimer, you're talking about uh, Ward and um, 
Eric Glover Williams, who's going to be out there on the field. We're starting to get into the meat of the schedule there. Do you really want a true freshman with no playing experience out there in your nickelback position? Because Fickle said earlier, with the injuries, they weren't able to really go to their nickel package against Indiana. Yeah, and to take your point further, I completely agree with you. And Marshawn Lattimore, if he was playing up to his recruiting rankings, if he didn't have the chronic hamstring issues, which is not his fault, I would say, you know, it's not a big deal. Yeah, if they have injuries, maybe they'll get down to a true freshman. But their number one backup corner is Marshawn Lattimore. He's also their top nickelback now. Hopefully Damon Webb gets back at some point. We'll see what happens there. But Marshawn Lattimore, to me, does not look like a guy that is ready to be an impact player. Maybe down the line he will be. Maybe later this season he will be. Or maybe I'm just totally wrong. But the little bit I've seen him out there, he's tentative. Maybe he's not fully healthy. I don't know, but... Jay Book, I, I'm not seeing like a guy that's like an elite, you know, future star player yet. Maybe I'm wrong, but what are you seeing out of, out of Marshawn Lattimore? I'm not sure if he's 100% healthy, but he's giving it everything that he can right now. I know he said uh, really close to the season that he's close to being where he wanted to be, but he wasn't quite there yet. Um, but Lattimore, he's a guy, he's, think about this, Dave, how much practice time has he missed? throughout his, his uh, time at Ohio State. He has surgery on the hamstrings. He missed a lot of time during this fall camp due to the hamstrings. He had to do a red shirt because of injuries. He's missed a lot of valuable practice reps uh, going against live competition. And now you're asking a guy um, who's been nicked up his entire career to step up and play at a very high level. This right here just really shines a light on how big of a, a loss uh, losing Damon Webb is because I think Latimer, if he can stay healthy and he continues to get comfortable in his role, his play will pick up, but I agree with you right now. It looks like a guy who's really trying to find his rhythm on the field. And as you mentioned earlier, you and I concur. Eric Smith should be in the mix at nickel, in our opinion. And I, you know, I've asked the coaches about that. They just say he's too inconsistent right now. They're just focusing him at safety, um, especially with Cam Burrows being out for the season. You know, he's now the top backup safety. I get that, but I think he at least needs to rep at nickel because they're losing bodies fast, and we'll see what happens. By the end of the season, it will not surprise me if Eric Smith is the number one nickel for the Buckeyes. All right, before we let you go, my man, um, Maryland predictions, Ohio State-Maryland predictions, another robust spread. I think Buckeyes are favored by 33.5. Last time I checked, I think it started at 30, 31 and up to 33.5. Uh, Randy Edsel's about to get fired. Uh, we're not sure if it's going to happen before the game or after, but he will get fired. Give me your Ohio State-Maryland predictions, sir. Well, I've picked Ohio State to cover the spread every game this season. And I think I've been burned every game besides the opening line. So for me... I'm picking against the spread, but I am picking Ohio State to win 35-10. The Buckeyes uh, still trying to iron out kinks on the offense. I'm not 100% sold that all the fixes that they talked about has been made. Urban Meyer has said week in and week out since the Virginia Tech game that they're, they're going to fix the offense. Well, is the offense really fixed when you're talking about bringing J.T. Bear in for the red zone? So I like Ohio State. Winning 35-10, but Maryland covers the 33-point spread. The offensive onslaught begins this week, Jay Book. They're going to kick some ass. We, we are in agreement on the defense. The defense is going to give up 10 points to this atrocious Maryland team. But I have the Buckeyes scoring 56 points. I have Buckeyes winning 56-10. to 10. This is not going to be close. We're going to see some guys play that we've been wanting to see play. K.J. Hill, maybe some young linebackers are going to make their debut. Jerome Baker, Justin Hilliard, we'll find out. But I like the Buckeyes to win this game 56-10. to 10. I like them to cover and then some. So we'll see. And my picks have been the worst of anybody's this year. So I, usually I would say whatever I say, take the opposite and bet heavy. Uh, but I have a good feeling the Buckeyes are going to blow out Maryland this week. We'll see what happens. Great stuff from Jonah Booker. You can read his stuff every week. He does outside Columbus. He's all over the front row message board. Does great work for us here at Bucknuts. Thank you very much to Jay Book. And thank you to the listeners out there. I appreciate you guys and gals tuning into the show. Hope you have a great day and a great weekend. Play that Buckeye swag. Best damn band in the land. Bye.